Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. I'm excited today to be unboxing Eldritch Horror Signs of Carcosa expansion. And you might be wondering, why am I unboxing this game? This is not the most recent thing to come out for Eldritch Horror, and you'd be 100% correct. But the reason I'm unboxing this, guys, is because I have been picking up Eldritch Horror products as I literally beat them. And how I'm doing this is whether it be through solo play or through, uh, you know, Monday night game night, with friends we've been ripping through this eldritch horror content and really enjoying it and i've played this off camera by myself as well and uh and had to play some of the ancient ones that i've gone up against multiple times until i've beaten them the game really does show a great narrative story behind it there is an element of randomness of course because that kind of comes with the uh the um hp lovecraft kind of theme essentially but overall in terms of a strategy you have to have have an overarching strategy to take some of these ancient ones down because the majority of them are abusing certain parts of the board or certain mechanisms against you and you need to mitigate that throughout the entire game. So if you're not familiar with Eldritch Horror, I currently don't have a playthrough of Eldritch Horror on the channel just yet. It's something that I've always wanted to do, something that I'll likely do with just a base game to get people in on it, but I don't have a scheduled time frame for it just yet. So for now, I'm just doing unboxings to show you guys the products themselves and also to tell you that this is a really solid solo game. You've heard this from me in prior years on the channel tell you that Eldritch Horror is one of my top solo games and still remains there. So the reason we're seeing Signs of Carcosa here is because I plan to literally be merging this content into the rest of the content that I've already gone through which is the base game, Mountains of Madness, Under the Pyramids, Strange Remnants, and Forsaken Lore. So I've already gone through all of those ancient ones which there's about five to three ancient ones per box there and now we're moving into signs of carcosa and then we'll be moving into the dreamlands and there's two more even after that and who knows how much more will come down the line but i can wait because i'm still behind by a few boxes but that's okay because i'm enjoying them at my own pace and really really like them so the purpose of this video guys is uh, not necessary to tell you how i'm playing through Eldritch Horror, although it is kind of fun to let you guys know that i am going to show you the inside of this box you can um, make an informed decision as well whether or not this is a product you want to pick up. So on the very back of the box, it says here, madness spreads across the globe. The tides of madness rise across the world. Uh, poets and artists are driven mad by the light of the moon and a mysterious play spreads insanity to its audiences. The unspeakable one is stirring in his cursed city tear tears through the dimensional walls. Lost Carcosa has come to Earth. This expansion features Haster, a dreadful new ancient one, and also includes a wealth of new encounters, mythos cards, and prelude cards. Four more investigators join the game, along with artifacts, spells, and unique assets to aid them in their struggles. So once the top of the box is off, you're going to be greeted with the expansion rule sheet. So of course, this is going to be the sheet you're going to want to reference as you go through all the different components to make sure first off you have everything you need there's a list of components up there in the top right there's an expansion overview just underneath of that and then a using this expansion section and things like that you've also got the expansion icon so very similar to uh, Arkham Horror the LCG or or any of those other types of fantasy flight games there's always a way to pull out content and put it back in very easily using icons on the card they do a really good job of that uh, because you definitely need it depending on how you want to play it's also going to give you some information here on this rule sheet about the uh, prelude cards, which is a really cool mechanic that came in earlier on in release order. Impairment tokens. This is also something that recently came in. And again, when I say recently, I'm talking in terms of release order up to Signs of Carcosa because uh, I haven't played past that yet. But impairment tokens came in around the halfway mark of the currently released products out there. They're really cool because they're going to mess with you essentially in your skills. Typically, you're able to uh, way back just gain in strength in terms of the skills checks but impairments have uh, begun to start hampering that and that's kind of an interesting way to go about it uh, being actually you know so you can't just beef your character up to no end uh, but there are limits on that as well Unique assets are explained down here as well. Then you've got yourself some additional rules that are obviously going to pertain to exactly what's going on inside of this expansion. Skill values, optional rules. You've got an insane game difficulty. So it says here, if players wish to have more challenging game experience than hard game difficulty from the base game, they can make the game significantly more difficult by building the Mythos deck using only hard Mythos cards. Note this optional rule may require additional expansions depending on the chosen ancient one. So that just sounds like an absolute nightmare because I know even just using the normal difficulty the game is already hard enough uh, but 
The cool thing is, again, that's replayability for you. So if you've played through all the Ancient Ones like I'm doing, uh, then we can go back later on and try to do some kind of campaign system through. That's another really cool thing is that the most recent expansions, Mass of Something, which I'm not going to try to pronounce that last word, which is the newest expansion that came out, I believe has a campaign system to allow you to play through this game with all the investigators that you've ever collected and you basically ditch them as they die and you don't get them back and you have to go from the first Ancient One all the way through is my understanding. So it just sounds like cool new ways to play a game that we all love. Control your fates at the very bottom of the rule book here. If I flip this over on the back, we got frequently asked questions. Always a good thing to reference because questions will appear, but it's nice to have that right up front. And your credits, and that's about it. Haster is certainly a good looking fellow, right? Yeah, not so much. He's not looking so good these days. This is his uh, front of the card. If you want to pause the screen so you can read it, then I'll let you do that. I am not going to flip this thing over because there is definitely spoilers in terms of how Haster will behave uh, once he awakens. That is something I'm not going to do. Uh, but I will show you the front of the card because that's just kind of common knowledge out of the gates anyway. The new investigators that come inside of this expansion are Dexter Drake. So again, some of these characters you're going to be familiar with if you purchase products like Mansions of Madness or other uh, Arkham-based products in general uh, from Fantasy Flight because some of these characters are strewn throughout them. So uh, they appear at different times and sometimes in different order, but you've got your uh, health and sanity as well as all the values of your different uh, skill dice to roll for those particular checks and things like that. Jenny Barnes makes an appearance, actually one of my favorite characters from the LCG, so that's really cool. She's really, really powerful. I like her a lot, actually. Um, and also really enjoy the novel that was actually put out for Arkham Horror LCG as well for her. Uh, and then we have Michael, ooh, I'm not so, f mm, oh, Michael McLenn. Okay, so for a second there, I couldn't actually focus in and see if that said, it looked like Michael Woolen for some reason. My eyes are going crazy, but uh, yes, familiar with this individual as well, so he's joining the fray. Wendy Adams, definitely, definitely. Uh, so Wendy is also joining us. And that's it. So those are the four new investigators. And of course, what's really cool on the back, you also get, without spoiling things on the side here, you basically get a nice little description of their backstory. So if you want to know more about Wendy Adams, you have a description there. And as well, it talks about like what items they start with. So we got ourselves the investigator tokens, and you can see these all up close now, much easier. So quality-wise, they look fantastic. Get your proof of purchase up there as well. Flipping them over doesn't see too much change, uh, except for the tokens on the bottom, which of course have the uh, minus two on the opposite side. Then just down below from this, you get into some exciting stuff. Some of this, not so much. Cultists come all the time in every single expansion, but there's always this balance because cultists typically come into play with the Ancient One, and each Ancient One changes the way cultists behave. So in other words, no matter how many new enemies come in per expansion, there's always a bundle of cultists that come along with it in order to balance things out so that there's an even ratio, basically, of cultists to other monsters. So there's always going to be cultists involved uh, in every single one of these expansions, but then a whole bunch of new monsters that you've never seen before so in this one we've got the crazed mob the deep one hybrid the firebug and the hunting by key if i'm saying that correctly you've got a rogue version of that as an epic monster at the bottom here and then you've got the spawn of haster down below none of those sound good and then the very back of the card itself, of course, you got all the you know skill checks for each of these. None of this is spoiler type situation because you'll be running into these as you go through. All right, so here we go with the key to Carcosa. We're gonna go through each of these. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to stop on every single one of them for a super long period of time, but just enough that if you wanna pause the screen and look at any one of them, you can. Uh, we got all kinds of cards here. Again, this is gonna bolster all the decks that you're familiar with with Eldritch Horror. And if you're not familiar with Eldritch Horror at all, then you know you can take a look at the keywords down here to see what type of card it is. So it could be an ally. Allies are obviously good. They're gonna be helping you out along the way. And items like Tommy guns, for instance, are going to help you shoot your way to situations or a flamethrower, for instance. Um, and then you get into these types of situations where you get spells and you'll see that there's uh, reoccurring spells that all look exactly the same and have the same text in the front. Why is that? Well, because at some part in this particular card, you'll be doing a test. And at some points you'll be flipping the card. And when you do so, uh, the difference is on the back of the card and that's what I'm not going to show you because that is the spoilers of these cards but basically different things will happen with spells and which makes them very cool because you can go ahead and try that risk versus reward situation with a spell knowing that it's going to give you a great benefit but could result in something bad happening.
Unique Assets is another type of asset that came into play fairly early on the expansions for Eldritch Horror um, and uh, are really cool. They're almost like, uh, they're just really, really powerful in most cases, or very, very useful, I should say. It's probably a better way to say it. Um, so you've got a whole bunch more of those to throw into the decks, which is always awesome. I always love the artwork in the game. It's just beyond ridiculous. Um, turning the tide here, so a bunch of those. We got conditions, so these are gonna be new conditions. This is a Bane condition, which is obviously bad. Blight is gonna be this one here, so conditions coming in that you can get hit with. Promise of Power is another one. This one is a deal that can happen. Wanted, so you can actually be wanted in this one. That's cool. Um, elusive is actually a talent. Headstrong is a talent. Uh, martial Prowess is a talent. Well, wow, there's quite a bit in this one. Resilient. Nice. Some of this artwork, again, you can see from the Arkham Horror LCG. That's the knife card art from the LCG. Skull Duggery, talent. Uh, there's a lot, actually, of conditions and things like that in here. I love that. It's just Oh, and then this is cool. So some of the bigger decks from the other from the prior expansions that you have, like Debt, for instance, you're going to add some more cards. Dark Packs are always interesting because you take a Dark Pack to usually gain something really good. Ooh, a new Blessed and a new Cursed card. So again, they'll have something going on in the back of them that's going to add to the mix. But that's going to do it for the mini cards. So here we have the first deck of cards. Of course, there's all kinds of different backs. Most of them pertain to the Ancient One or Gates and all kinds of different things. So if you're familiar with Eldritch Horror, you know exactly what these cards are all about in terms of the backs of them anyway. I'm going to show you some of the front. These are encounter cards for specific uh, areas of the world, basically. So that's really cool because they add into, into the... Uh, replayability of the game you're going to see of course that the actual icon for this expansion is always down at the bottom so if you want to pull them out but you've got encounter cards that are specific to certain areas they're color coded so this is becoming a theme across all of these games uh, so really easy to differentiate things and keep them all organized i don't really want to stop on any of them for too too long at all because mainly there's tons of spoilers so of course these are all the objective cards for haster again i'm not i'm just not going to stop on them i don't want to spoil uh, what the objective cards are i want you to see them on your own and then of course you get a whole whole bunch of cards here that pertain directly to uh, Haster. So very, very cool. This is one deck that's not so much as easy to show on camera. Uh, the mini cards are a lot easier, but I do want to show you what it looks like. Again, artwork wise and the style of these cards and theme is off the charts. I've always loved the look of it. So here's a look at the back of the second deck. We got a whole bunch of Mythos cards, the Prelude cards that we're talking about are here, and all kinds of other cards that relate right back to Haster. So again, kind of spoilers territories technically, but a uh, whole bunch. So again, these are all broken into different encounters based on here's the something you can do, here's the good thing, here's the bad thing. And that's essentially kind of how it rolls. You read the top part, you do something, and you either go into the success or the ultimate failure section of these cards. And you've got all of these, which are gonna be added into the game uh, uh, that are going to be different uh, actual mythos cards that will be pulled that are going to you know cause different things to happen whether it's putting clues down monster surges um, all that kind of stuff so again more so on the explaining of the rules and not worth going over in this video but wanted to show you the cards there's a lot actually that goes into this small small box so in my opinion these are always worth it because they really do bolster uh, the game quite nicely I'll be sleeving these up and merging these into the other decks of cards that I have for this game quite happy with the experience it adds one new ancient one to go after and then after this and we complete this one we're moving to the dreamlands which is really cool so guys thank you so much for watching hopefully if you're looking to get into eldritch horror and you wanted to know what it kind of looks like on the inside or you've never even picked up signs of carcosa and you have eldritch horror then hopefully this gives you a good look on the inside of the box and what to expect thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo